Greetings fellow learners, in this video we are going to talk about image segmentation. The what, the why, and the how. So let's get to it. So what is image segmentation? So we take an image, we'll partition the image into segments, which are sets of pixels that are related. And then the process of creating this image is image segmentation. Simple enough. Now, why image segmentation? To understand this, we're going to go back to German psychologists in the 1920s and 30s who posited, how does the brain make sense of the complex visuals around us? And what they came up with is that the brain perceives the whole as different from the sum of its parts. And to clarify this, they came up with a set of principles that are known as the Gestalt principles. Gestalt meaning unified whole in German. So let's take a look at some of these principles. The first is similarity. So here, the sum of parts over here is that we see individual squares that are arranged in a grid. But the way that our brain perceives the whole is that this is a grid of squares that are in, divided into two sets. That is the green set as well as the gray set. We segment by color. The next is continuity. So the sum of parts here is that these are individual dots with no explicit connections between them. But as a whole, our brain will group the dots that look like they belong on a path of a continuous curve. Next is closure. So the sum of parts here is that, you know, these are essentially just blots of black and white on the screen. But as a whole, the brain is going to complete the missing outlines here. And what we see is a panda. Then we have proximity. So the sum of parts here is that, you know, these are just identical dots that are placed unevenly on a grid. But as a whole, the brain is going to group the dots into three different groups based on their proximity. Next is figure and ground. So the sum of parts here is that these are just blots of individual black and white regularly across the screen. But as a whole, the brain is going to assign some shapes as the foreground, which is the figure, and others as the background, which is the ground. And this depends on what you focus on. So in this case, the tree could be the foreground, but then by nature, this white area is the background. Or you might focus on the gorilla and the tiger over here in the foreground, and then the black just becomes the background. So based on these principles, we can kind of see that the brain organizes visual information by grouping related objects. And in computer vision, image segmentation groups related pixels mimicking this organization. And so what we see is that, you know, let's say that we're processing, you know, the brain is processing some visual scene over here. What it's going to do is it's going to group this visual information. And then after further processing, it's going to process it. In this case, it probably, you know, says, hey, this is a tiger. In a similar way in computer vision, we could be processing an input image. And the processing could be, you know, image segmentation, which is, you know, we group the pixels in the image. And then we can perform some more downstream processing like object detection. And so overall, image segmentation can be used as a pre-processing step for other downstream vision tasks to mimic how the brain organizes visual information. And so we can use image segmentation. Now, how do we do image segmentation. Now in this video, we're going to talk about a graph based method that was introduced in 2004 that will group sets of pixels together into segments. Now, some nice properties about this method is that it produces segments that are neither too coarse nor too fine, and we can adjust that. And it is also efficient with a linear runtime with respect to the number of pixels in the image. And this is really important because computer vision applications can use this as a pre-processing step. 
akin to how, again, the brain organizes visual information as groups. So let's actually talk about this in the form of the algorithm itself. So here is our algorithm over here, where we have inputs are going to be the image itself, and it's going to be some K, which is a constant indicating how easy it is to merge certain segments. Next, the output is going to be an assignment of every pixel to a segment. Now, for step one, we're going to represent the image as a graph. So every vertex is a pixel, and every edge connects neighboring pixels with the weight equal to the difference in pixel intensities. And each pixel thus starts out as its own segment. So in order to see what this looks like, it might look like something like this as the initialization. So we have, let's say, a 5 cross 5 grid of pixels. The, the values inside each vertex indicate the pixel intensities, and we're connecting edges between them, where the edge weights written in gray are just going to be the difference, the absolute difference between the pixel intensities. And so you can see pixels that are very dissimilar to their neighbors have a very strong edge between them, and the pixels that are very similar to their neighbors have a very light edge between them. So this is the initial setup in step one. So each pixel begins as its own segment, and the goal is to combine you know, multiple segments together bottom up to eventually get reasonable segments within this image. So to do this, we sort the edge weights in ascending order from lowest to highest. And then for every single edge weight between the vertices VI and VJ, what we're going to do is determine whether we can merge the two segments that are joined by the edge. So, well, if VI and VJ are, for, are the part of the same segment, there's nothing to join. So we do nothing and then just go to the next edge. But if they are of different segments, let's say segment A and segment B, we are going to now assess if these two segments, A and B, can be joined together. And to do this, what we do is we first determine some internal difference of segment A and the internal difference of segment B. This is equivalent to the largest magnitude uh, pixel difference intensity in region A and pixel difference intensity in segment B as well. And we can find this by constructing like a minimum spanning tree for each case and just determining the maximum edge of the minimum spanning tree. So a minimum spanning tree is the acyclic graph that you can construct by connecting all pixels within A or all vertices within A such that there is no cycle in between and the sum of edge weights is minimized. And we're just getting the maximum edge weight from that. Similarly, we're doing the same for B. And so this is just going to be like the largest variation that exists within A and the largest pixel variation that exists within B stored in these two variables. Now we determine something called like a threshold for segments A and segments B. This is just going to indicate how easy it is to combine segments together. So in this case, you know, it's going to be defined by some constant K that we defined previously, divided by the cardinality, which is the number of vertices in A and B. So if k is large, it's going to be easier to merge segments together. If k is small, then it's going to be very difficult to merge large segments together. And hence, we prefer finer segments. Next, we determine the minimum internal difference between segments A and segments B, and compare this to our edge. So our current edge, if it is less than this internal difference, then we will merge the segments A and B. Otherwise, we do nothing and then iterate towards the next edge. So very quickly now, I know this was like a lot, but let's actually walk through how it would look for the base case, which is the first iteration when every pixel is its own segment to begin with. So let's start with an edge between two pixels here, which are in two different segments. If they are in the same segment, do nothing. They are not. They are in different segments indeed. And let's say it's segment A and segment B. Next, we determine the internal difference. In this case, every segment is just a pixel with no edge. So the internal difference is going to be zero for both of these cases. 
Next, let's determine a threshold. Let's say that K is some 100. I'm just saying a number right now. And the cardinality of A and B is just one. So these thresholds are both going to be 100. Now, the minimum internal difference is going to be the min of, this will be zero plus 100, and this will also be zero plus 100. So overall, the minimum is just K. It is just 100 itself. Now, if the edge weight is less than the minimum internal difference, which we determined as 100 or K for now, we will merge A and B. In this case, the edge weight, you know, if you look at like this other graph over here, if they are such small intensities, you know, you could see that the edge weights, they don't even come near 100. So we would be merging pixels left and right. So in this case, this criteria right now is going to be true. And so we merge segments A and B. And you can imagine for very high levels of K, we would continue merging a lot of these segments together. But if K was zero, then you can imagine that individual pixels would literally be their own segment and that would be the end of segmentation. And hence K can be used to vary how coarse or how fine we want these segments to be. So overall at a high level, I hope that this algorithm makes sense. Now to visualize what's actually going on, we can code exactly this out and we can see it in action. So for example, this, I pass in an input image here, we pass in K is equal to 100, and what we get as the segmentation is something that looks like this. You can see that there's a lot more segments than what we really need, and so we can try increasing K and see what happens. And you get something that looks like this. It's better than before, but yeah, sure, still has like some uneven segments here and there, but it is still recognizing the object as we would like. Now I tried it on this other input image over here with K is equal to a thousand. This is a much bigger image. And you can see like all kinds of, of segments that are created here. But even here, it kind of gets like some contours. If you look here, this is still the hat. This is still the buttocks. This is like the leg parts of the thigh over here. So it's still nailing some contours that we do see in this original image. But if you increase now K from 1000, you increase it to 3000. You can see that the, the, the segmentation here just becomes more coarse. So now this leg has appeared as one segment. The shoe is entirely one segment. This entire leg is like one segment over here. And you can kind of like see some similarities here. So overall, these segments are neither too coarse and too fine. And they can also be adjusted with that K value. And the segments produced here are, you know, they were produced of like with reasonable speed. And while they don't necessarily produce the best segments, they can be good as like a pre-processing step for other computer operations. And for example, they can be used in object detection that are used in like R CNNs, which we will see in a future video. Quiz time. Have you been paying attention? Let's quiz you to find out. Which of the following is true about image segmentation? A. It colors every object in an image randomly to improve visualization. B, it partitions an image into sets of related pixels. C, it serves as a pre-processing step for vision tasks inspired by how the brain groups objects. And D, it guarantees perfect recognition of objects without further processing. I'll give you a few seconds to answer this question. The correct options are B and C. Did you get them right? Comment your reasoning down below and let's have a discussion. And at this point, if you think I do deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like because it will help me out a lot. Now that's gonna do it for quiz time, but before we go, let's generate a summary. In this video, we took a look at what image segmentation is, and then we took a look at why image segmentation exists through Gestalt principles. And we surmise that image segmentation can be used as a pre-processing step for other downstream vision tasks to imitate how the brain organizes visual information. We then took a look at the algorithm of a graph-based image segmentation technique. And we even visualized outputs for different images and also different level of coarse slash fineness of segments. And we also drew a conclusion based on this too. 
that, you know, they are neither too coarse nor too fine, and that these segments are produced with reasonable speed, making them suitable as an initializer for other computer vision applications. So that's all that we have for today. If you do think I deserve it and you like the video, please do consider giving this video a like because it will help me out a lot. I'm going to leave some resources to the slides as well as some code as well down in the description below. So do check that out and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.